Thank you for tuning in to another episode on the Scouse Oracle channel. I truly appreciate it if you can hit that subscribe button. Today I do want to be going more into my response I received, what the NHS England have sent me, a full breakdown of the six phases of the new digital system being built across the UK and most importantly, can you opt out? And by the end of it, you'll have more of an understanding and you'll know why I've started a petition. But bear with me, let's get into it. I submitted a Freedom of Information request. I wanted to know what data is being entered, whether it's anonymous, whether it's identifiable, where it goes and what exactly has changed. You see, the NHS have confirmed our data flowing into a new national system, the Federated Data Platform and the National Data Integration Tenant. So they sent me documents. They didn't send me the documents. They sent me links and said, here's where you're going to find the information you've requested, as always. So I have gone to the Identifiable Data, Data Protection Impact Assessment, the Level Security Policy and the National Data Integration Product Annex. And this is where the truth lies within all the technical pages within these documents. And I'm going to break it all down for you. So the data protection impact assessment in the identifiable data section, it says identifiable personal data will be collected and curated by the NHS England. So that means your details enter this national pipeline before anything else is done. So bear with me. So this includes name, address, NHS number and date of birth. So basically they've got daily identity updates where it refreshes continuously, refreshing your identity every day so the system knows exactly who you are. The NHS identity spine is the glue that sticks all your NHS data together behind the scenes. So here's the bit that nobody is explaining because all of that sounds it, it sounds reasonable as opposed to the collecting data to involve your care your all other departments are able to see it and you're in control in a way where you know where something's being sent so if your gp needs to send a record to your hospital you're knowing that that is occurring so we've got a change in terms of a pseudonodism. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that right. Pseudomization. 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 So that means it's not anonymous. So it means your identity is being swapped for a code, but then something then can still match back to you. So when the NHS is saying we only use anonymous statistics nationally, it does sound quite reassuring, doesn't it? But the technical documents are saying something completely different. So they're showing that there's an identifiable data enters the national data integration tenant, meaning that it enters that system first. So please bear with me. I know this is a lot, but if you've been following me for a while, you'll see why this is huge. Now, it's not... So, the system labels it and then the label can be reversed if needed. So, basically, it's not shredded. It's like a sticker. So, this is the real shift. So, before this shift, the data stayed inside your trust. So, your identity, that was your data and that stays with you and then anything else was basically sent anonymously. Now the identifiable data enters a national system before that. Does that make sense? So that pseudomization, the pseudomization, it's a long word, you'll, you'll see it, it's the identifiable data is entering the system before that happening, before them breaking it down, shredding your identity and then putting all the information across. It's not happening. Your identity is there first. So you, you can't opt out of that first step. And that's why people deserve clarity. People are deserving choice. 
You see, that what they're telling the public is it's just an anonymous statistic. Identifiable data stays in your trust and nothing's changed. But the documents confirm that the identifiable data enters the national system. So the pseudonymization happens after ingestion. So the identity is matched nationally. So they've used the line. The FDP isn't intended to support cross-government data sharing. That's the line as well that they've used. When pointing me to these documents, they've then put a line underneath saying it's not intended to support data sharing. So not intended doesn't mean not possible and it doesn't mean that policies aren't going to come in place to then make that happen. So they're saying, well, that's not what we're saying it's for today. So the... Phase one that were the identity unification was the one login. That was phase one, wasn't it? One key for all government services. And if you've been following me, you'll see where I've shown the NHS app integration. That's currently happening. The phase two, the national data integration tenant. So we're in phase two is the national pipe. Everything flows through it. Phase three is the dashboards and control panels that are sitting on top. Phase four is the cross-government potential. So this is being made possible by the identity and the data architecture, which I've been showing. So if everything recognises you through one login, other services can link later if the policy changes. So you see where you're saying that well, I, I opted out of having my information shared by the NHS a while back, but th this is the switch, and this is the, the the this is the pipeline that's making it possible to all the other services in which you're accessing. They're all asking you to prove your identity. So phase five for future demand planning, risk score, scoring, and a system wide modeling. So phase six would be the digital economy integration. It would be once identity and data are unified, the entire economy can eventually be redesigned around the same digital foundation. So digital licenses, digital benefits, digital travel checks, digital work verification, digital tax systems. The NHS is the first car basically on the motorway. But the motorway is being built for the whole whole country. So the programme is already costing 330 million, but we've still not been given the full breakdown. So they've come to me and they've said, because it's one of the things that I asked for, is the cost of the contract is 330 million for a seven year period, but we don't hold the information of the expenditure to date. So they don't know how much it's cost to date. And so how are they keeping on top of that? So they don't know, they can't tell us where the money is going or, or what future phases will cost or what the future phases are. So right now we're between phase two and phase three. So that means that the NHS app has not yet fully merged with one login. Not all trusts have come on board not all data at the moment flows through it actively. There's no national opt-out. There's no public consultation and there's no parliamentary debate. So you see what's happening in the mainstream media, what everyone's talking about and the distraction there. This is what is going on behind the scenes. So the foundations are being built, but the system, it, it's not locked in yet. It's not locked in. So this is not just about hospitals. It's it, it's about the digital foundation of the UK. So if that foundation is changing, the public deserves transparency and clarity and choice. So what I'm asking for in the petition, which has already had the signatures, I haven't raised it publicly because I'm waiting for it now to be published, is for a national opt-out for the national data integration tenant and for the FDP processing. I'm asking for a public consultation before phase three is fully activated. I'm asking for 
plain explanations so the public understands the system that they're being moved on to. Just tell us, tell us exactly how it is. And the alignment between public messaging and internal documentation, because right now they're not matching up. They're not matching up. And this isn't about fear. It isn't about speculation. This is their own documentation. This is everything that should be being explained to the public. This is the clarity in which is needed so the public can stay informed. And as always, I will continue to bring you the updates as and when I receive them. I know there's a lot going on. I know there's a lot of things happening at the same time. But I believe this is now an entry point in where we can clearly demand something and petition where our voices are going to matter. So as I say, I'll share it publicly when it's published. And I do know as well today there is a debate going on regarding the petition in regards to the Children and Wellbeings Bill. So I'll be keeping an eye on that today also and bringing that to you. As always, this is not about fear mongering. This is not... This is about just more clarity, more understanding of how the systems work and knowledge is power. Knowledge is power and I hope I am providing that to you. As always, I will put an explanation in the captions. If you can subscribe as well, it'll be very much appreciated. And I hope that you continue on this journey with me because, yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And thank you for being here. Thank you for listening.